This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some important update to share with you. There is a push for $2,000 stimulus checks. I'll let you know the latest of what's going on with that. More stimulus money is definitely coming in 2023. I'll let you know which five states are giving out money in 2023 in the form of stimulus checks. Gas prices go below $3 per gallon in certain states, but it's hit a 15 month low. I'll let you know the latest with that. Bernie Sanders says that he is disappointed with the Biden administration. I was disappointed uh, that the Biden administration. I'll play you that video clip and I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-based updates, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more daily straight to the point updates on matters that financially matter to you. So gas prices tumble to 15 month low, sub $3 could be next. So the plunging gasoline prices hit another milestone on Friday with the national average sinking to the lowest level since September of 2021. The sharp decline in the pump uh, prices is encouraging news for consumers after a year of high prices for groceries, rent, and other essentials. So a gallon of gas now sells for an average of $3.18. Uh, that marks a decline of 14 cents in the past week and 56 cents in the past month. So gas prices are going down. I think last time I saw here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, it was like 270 or 278. I'm curious, what are your gas prices in your area? If you want to let us know the price and where you're at, uh, that would be really cool to see. Let us know down in the comments below. Uh, and yes, yeah, so it could be $3 per gallon as an average coming up. It is $3 per gallon here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh, so stimulus update more stimulus money is coming in 2023 here's who will get it many people are hoping for another stimulus check the federal government may not deliver and five states are sending out stimulus money to residents in 2023 so when it comes to more stimulus money uh, in terms of a federal level looks like it's not going to happen unless there is a, a an official recession. Then the biggest chance we have is a recession stimulus check, as there were in 2001 and 2008. That's when the government gave out federal stimulus checks because of the recession. So could be a chance for a recession stimulus check, although we are not officially in a recession yet, although we were before, but not now. And then uh, more stimulus money going out in 2023. I'll let you know the five states that are giving out stimulus checks. Uh, so California, those $200 to $1,050 checks, those are going out through January 14th. Colorado, payments of up to $1,500 for joint filers, $750 for single filers. Uh, those are expected to be sent out by t January 31st. And then Idaho, uh, those are 300 or 300 for single, $600 for joint filers. Uh, those are going out in the beginning of the year. And then homeowners in New Jersey are eligible to receive a payment of up to $1,500. And renters are eligible to receive up to $450 in rent rebates. Those are scheduled to be paid out by May of 2023. And South Carolina payments of up to $800 are available for South Carolina residents. Uh, those are going to be paying out between February, latest February 15th and uh, could be, or anyone who needs an extension could be paid out between February 15th and March of 2023. Although I did receive, I live in South Carolina, I did receive that $800 stimulus check maybe about two weeks ago, which was a surprise. Uh, wasn't sure, you know, if I was, well, you know, so I thought it was a bill when I saw it. I'm like, oh man, I owe $800 for what? And then I was like, oh no, it's a check for $800, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, next up, when it comes to another big stimulus check here, Pennsylvania Governor Wolf talks efforts to send $2,000 stimulus checks. So we've heard this for a while, the $2,000 stimulus checks. Tom Wolf wrapping up his tenure as Pennsylvania's governor after two terms and eight years. Uh, basically, um, he is pushing to send $2,000 stimulus checks directly to Pennsylvania residents. Uh, this is because they're sitting on a lot of money. So 
uh, they're sitting on $1.7 billion and saying just use some of that to send $2,000 stimulus checks to Pennsylvania residents. What he said here is the money would have come from federal funds. It was free money just to send it out and Republicans did not want to do that. But then after the budget passed and we had all this money, I said, here's another opportunity instead of using federal money, let's use state money. We had plenty and it's not like we had to raise anybody's taxes. So, uh, and Wolf's plan, pencil, uh, anyone making less than $80,000 would have received a $2,000 check. So he's still pushing for it. And it's kind of like on a federal level as well. There's a lot of money in the bank on a federal level. You don't have to raise any taxes on anyone. And $2,000 stimulus checks could be sent out as well. On a federal level, same thing on the Pennsylvania level. So uh, when it comes to $2,000 stimulus checks, the money is there from all the stimulus sitting in a bank account but not going out. So Bernie Sanders in the past said, uh, Bernie Sanders pressing Joe Biden on $2,000 stimulus checks saying promises must be kept. This is from a while ago, but the idea of $2,000 stimulus checks is because the money was in the bank and could have been sent out. Uh, so same thing on the Pennsylvania level, same thing on the federal level, but should there be federal stimulus checks of $2,000? And should there be stimulus checks in Pennsylvania for $2,000? If the money is there, should it be sent out? Should it be used for other things? Let me know your thoughts on that. When it comes to other issues with the country, take a look at what Bernie Sanders has to say. Mr. President, uh, this is an issue that I and a number of us Democrats and Republicans progressives, conservatives, uh, have been working on for a number of years. Uh, I was disappointed uh, that the Biden administration uh, has announced its opposition uh, to the resolution that uh, I am bringing forth. Uh, but we have been in communication with the administration all day, and uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, we have received a commitment from them uh, that they will uh, work with us uh, to end the war in Yemen and bring peace to that very troubled region. Now, I don't know if the administration and those of us who want to go forward will end up being in agreement. If not, uh, I assure the members that we will be back with a resolution in the very near future, as soon as we can, because this is an issue that I and many of us feel passionately about. So uh, to the members, uh, I'm not going to ask for a vote tonight, but I do want to express my concerns, deep concerns, about what's going on in that region. Uh, Mr. President, in 2014, with the active support of the United States military, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and a coalition of other countries intervened in the civil war in Yemen. Uh, the result of that intervention was the creation of the worst humanitarian crisis on the planet. And it really is almost hard to imagine what is going on in that impoverished country. Since the war began in 2015, over 377,000 people have been killed, including at least 130,000 people who have died from indirect causes like food insecurity and lack of health care as a direct result of the Saudi blockade of Yemen and the humanitarian obstruction by warring parties. Today, nearly 25 million Yemenis are in need of humanitarian assistance, five million are at risk of famine, and over a million are affected by cholera. According to UNICEF, by the end of this calendar year, nearly 18 million people, including over nine million children, will lack access to safe water, sanitation, and hygiene services in Yemen, leading to regular outbreaks of preventable diseases like cholera, measles, and diphtheria. The eight-year war in Yemen has internally displaced over four million people, making Yemen home to one of the largest internal displacement crises in the world, with women and children bearing the brunt of that burden. 
According to the United Nations Population Fund, nearly 77 percent or 3 million of those displaced in Yemen are women and children. Mr. President, every two hours, a Yemeni woman dies during childbirth, an almost entirely preventable crisis. Furthermore, in Yemen today, more than a million pregnant and breastfeeding women are acutely malnourished, a number we may see double with rising food insecurity. According to the International Relief Organization, Oxfam, the threat of famine is very serious. Despite ongoing humanitarian assistance, over 17 million people in Yemen remain food insecure, a number set to rise to 19 million by the end of this year. In Yemen today, over a million pregnant or breastfeeding women and over two million children under five require treatment for acute malnutrition. Acute malnutrition. And if you think the suffering in that country cannot get any worse, unfortunately, you would be dead wrong. The United Nations reports that if the conflict doesn't stop, the war in Yemen could lead to the deaths of 1.3 million people by the year 2030. And Mr. President, let us be crystal clear. The initiators of this terrible war in Yemen was Saudi Arabia one of the very most dangerous countries on the face of this earth. Saudi Arabia is a dictatorship that is doing everything that it can to crush democracy in its own country. It is a brutal regime that treats women as third-class citizens and tortures civilians. It is one of the worst human rights violators in the world. Saudi Arabia's crown prince, as I think many of us are familiar with, Mohammed bin Salman, ordered the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, a Washington Post columnist and American resident, with a bone saw in 2018. And there is little doubt about that. In a blatant attempt to jack up gas prices in the United States and harm our economy, Saudi Arabia agreed to partner with Vladimir Putin in the murderous war against the people of Ukraine. At a time when children in Yemen are facing mass starvation, when that impoverished country's health care system is collapsing, the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman bought himself a $500 million yacht a $300 million French chateau, and a $450 million Leonardo da Vinci painting. And he can afford to do this because their family is worth some $1.4 trillion, one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest family in the entire world. According to Freedom House, a respected human rights organization, quotes Saudi Arabia's absolute monarchy restricts almost all political rights and civil liberties. No officials at the national level are elected. The regime relies on pervasive surveillance. The criminalization of dissent appeals to sectarianism and ethnicity and public spending supported by oil revenues to remain in power. Women and religious minorities face extensive discrimination in law and in practice, end quote. According to Human Rights Watch, under the government headed by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, quote, Saudi Arabia has experienced the worst period of repression in its modern history, end of quote. Human Rights Watch has reported that, quote, accounts have emerged of alleged torture of high-profile political detainees in Saudi prisoners, end of quote, including Saudi women's rights activists and others. The alleged torture included electric shocks, beatings, whippings, and sexual harassment. Mr. President, enough is enough. We must fundamentally reassess our relationship with the murderous regime of Saudi Arabia. We can and we must begin to do that by ending our support for the Saudi-led war in Yemen. And that is why I have introduced a resolution 
that requires the United States to withdraw its forces from and involvement in the Saudi-led war in Yemen, which has not been authorized by the United States Congress. What are your thoughts? Do you agree or disagree with Bernie Sanders? And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, this is Bella's tip of the day. I want to say that never let bad vibes take over you. You have to let the good vibes just let you free. You have to always be good and always be humble and always be great to everybody. And I love making these type of days for you guys because you guys are my friends. Bye! I'm gonna do a tip of the day. I'm gonna do a tip of the day. Hi, guys. Hi. This is my tip of the day. I want to say don't go on the road. If you cross, you'll get smushed. And have a great day. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your support. So just looking at myself, I am definitely due for a haircut. Haven't gotten a haircut uh, since my surgery, which is about a month ago, and haven't shaved since then as well, because mainly I'm just sitting and sitting around putting my feet up. I can't even put any weight on my foot yet, so uh, I haven't really felt like uh, shaving or getting a haircut. Uh, I am showering though. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, anyways, hopefully you have a great rest of your day. If you want to check out any of my other videos, click right up here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.